Everybody, this is Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm talking today with Olaf. Hello, hello, Christian. So, for folks that don't know you, who are you? Where are you? And what do you do? Well, I'm a, I'm a Norwegian MVP in the Cloud and Data Center Management uh, Group, uh, and I've been an MVP for 15 years since 2008. So, uh, I, I like to say that I'm I got my MVP award when I was about 10 or 12 years or something like that. But that's right. Yeah, and yeah. I got married when I was 12 as well. So yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's it's always uh, easier to lie to yourself than other, yeah. right? So yeah, yeah. yeah. So 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 I, I always like to ask too. So for for being a seasoned MVP, been in it for a while, uh, to go back down memory lane, but. What was that process like? Like, where, what were you doing prior to becoming an MVP, and what was the process of becoming an MVP for you? Yeah, for, for me, it was. Um, uh, I, I was actually the first um, uh, non-developer MVP in Norway that got the title. Uh, so they had only had a couple before me, but they were all uh, developers. Uh, but I, I was so lucky that uh, I, I had my MCT uh, certified trainer uh, and I did a lot of uh, training and uh, Microsoft asked me one time when they was out of a speaker uh, in, in my hometown Bergen in Norway, mm -hmm. if I can just do a session on I think it was uh, server 2003 or something like that. Uh, so I just jumped on it and uh, did uh, a presentation. It was uh, maybe the hardest thing I have done up till then because it was a new forum. It was a lot of people, but still it was a fun topic to talk about. So I did uh, the first session of, uh, uh, of uh, a Microsoft con conference and I was happy. So the next time they asked me to come back and after that one, they asked me to be on the, it was a Norwegian tour with four cities. So I attended all the four cities and started to do this every year and do speeches. And uh, suddenly Microsoft just decided that uh, maybe we should nominate Olav. And at that time I was working on uh, uh, the fabulous operating system, uh, Windows Vista. Oh yeah, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah. we were we were early in the deployment phase actually, and I did some speak. Uh, I had a, a session at Tech Ad in uh, in in the states about upgrading Norway to Windows Vista, mm. uh, and uh, then I was nominated in the setup and deployment team at that time, and uh, got successfully in hopefully, and have been an MVP since, but in different categories, but. My main thing to stay an MVP have been basically doing speeches at uh, conferences uh, and some other kind of activities. But uh, lately, I've gone down the road. You are on the podcast uh, track, so I have my Blue Screen Brothers podcast. Uh, that's a Norwegian uh, uh, Norwegian sound podcast, but it's an English YouTube channel doing uh, demonstration, more technical demonstration, because it that's easier with with the picture than just the sound. Well, it's it, it's interesting too. I mean, where you started out by saying you know not a non developer that that's like a, 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 a you know folks that aren't as familiar with the program. You know, the, your first uh, uh, instinct is is like, well, if you're a Microsoft MVP, therefore you must code you must be very technical and certainly we're all focused on technology i'm also a yeah. business focused mvp you know my my degrees are in marketing but i've been in tech for 32 years and and so it's it's uh uh you, you know the topics that i focus on are more you know user centric user experience um yeah and you know that in that side of things the business topics and and dabble in the IT pro and the admin topics as well, but yeah. uh, can't can't write a a line of code. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I started uh, uh, mostly that way myself, and uh, when they changed the setup and the deployment program uh, uh, to a, another uh, to to I think think it was be a part of the Windows update uh, group. 
it suddenly didn't fit me as well. And then I was uh, over to the Windows uh, MVP part instead. And one year I actually had two MVPs and then it was Windows and Office uh, mm. MVPs. Uh, so, but uh, I like to think about it that as I grown up and started to do something else. So, so then I went over to the to the uh, data center and Azure mainly. But but I'm always loving uh, Microsoft 365. That was my main uh, uh, cloud technology uh, chaser. Uh, and after a while, I was starting to do more Azure work. And suddenly, I was uh, hired in a bank as a uh, operation manager for Azure, and then now I see myself at, as an Azure janitor doing maintenance and hmm. security. So yeah, well, that sounds really glitzy. A uh, <laughs> an Azure uh, janitor, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because I, I don't think we have any good name because it's 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 a kind of uh, uh, operation manager role, but I do more jobs. I I find stuff that shouldn't be there. I delete it. I I do a lot of what I call janitoring, right? It's a, it's a kind of governance and uh, everything in governance is the main, uh, main part you have to do to stay secure. So you have the security side as an effect that you actually are a janitor and clean up stuff and find all these loopholes with networks that shouldn't be there or gateways that should be closed and so on. I, I've spent a good portion of my career, certainly when I was back in the project management world, um, as doing janitorial services in operations, same thing where it's, uh, you, know, uh, you know, unappealingly referred to as like special projects. I was the one that would come in and I usually was, uh, like I had teams that would get merged into by my team. I was, uh, uh, tasked with managing people out. So, uh, mm -hmm. to, to taking teams, taking peers that got, moved under me so that I could then cut across yeah. and clean up that. So not always the fun job doing the cleanup stuff, but yeah. uh, I, I prefer more of the governance as well, which is the oversight, put the process in place to, um, to have transparency on the work that's being done and, and yeah. policies, procedures for provisioning new systems and sites and teams and, uh, and putting the life cycle management in place and make sure that it's all running. Uh, yeah. So. And, and then you also get the, the place to be with the regarding of news, because when you are doing the maintenance or the governance, you actually are uh, in place of uh, discovering new technology, technologies, new yep. way of doing stuff. So, so you, you are allowed to stay ahead and actually do, uh, do exploring of everything you think could be a greater solution, a better way of doing stuff for a new security system and stuff, stuff like that. So yeah, it's quite fun. I, I agree because it's also, it's perfect for people that have adult uh, ADHD and, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. but it, it's, uh, but having that variety, there's something to be said about having a variety in work. And I, I've never been that operations that ongoing, uh, you know, uh, Basically, it's yeah. it's packaged or set up. It's established, and now it's just running it ongoing. Like, drives me crazy. I gotta be yeah. Uh, new, I gotta be new challenges. Things. Yeah, yeah. New challenges always. That's the thing, and and that's why I call it a janitor because I feel like you do a lot of different stuff. You need to know a lot of stuff, and you do a, a lot of different st stuff. And because we are a bank, yeah, my uh, work are really. Uh, techno intensive uh, and we have high priority on the technology and the security side and cost of course because every bank need to have uh, they don't need to have a low cost but they have to justify the cost so so when i can yeah. discover that somebody set up an sql server and forgot to delete the disks and we suddenly have uh, 20000 a year in, in disk space not being used for something. So then you save money and you secure the system because in the same uh, feature, we actually discovered that we had uh, fi firewall uh, ports open to a VNet that wasn't connected to anything, but it could easily be connected. So so you have different challenges all the time and you, 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 you can, uh, being a bank with uh, quite a few uh, developers, we have a lot of fun technology. Technology, so, 
and uh, that, that's uh, going back to the MVP, uh, the, the way of uh, be able to connect to different kind of product groups uh, when I need to learn something new. Mm -hmm. If I need to learn something I didn't know anything about or I have a silly question, I can actually ask it and people will understand, okay, this is a newbie and we try to help him. So both in communities and internal lists, uh, of course. Well, that, that's why, I mean, even before becoming an MVP, I mean, one of the things that I love about it is with the MVP calls, which are on a weekly basis now, the, the NDI calls. And for those that aren't familiar, it's the, so it's, it's there, we're all under NDA. We get advanced views of things, the product teams, some of them are more forthcoming than others with sharing with roadmap and, hey, here's what we're thinking about, but we've not made decisions on. What are your thoughts about this? Um, other things that we see that are you know before or during a private preview and we provide feedback on. But one of the things that I love about that is being able to see things. And sometimes I'll be honest, I'll join a call about something new and be like, all right, this has, I, like, I see no value in this for me, for the stuff that I'm doing. I'll drop out of the call. I'll, I'll go and, and, and uh, you know, and sit in on things like that. Sounds like it might be interesting or apply or drop back out of that. I was doing hmm. that kind of activity. Maybe that's just the personality of a, of an MVP to go and experiment to, to, you know, take in all this new, but I, I'm part of, local communities here and I was in California where I was born and raised but was part of different technical communities and would often sign up for you know hey new product or new hey this this is a new advance in this area come check it out what we're doing I would constantly participate in those community based activities I'm doing less of that now more MVP stuff but mm. again it's just a great way to expose yourself to new ideas that could possibly impact your company yeah. your job or the very least something a blog or, or a podcast about. Yeah. And the same thing, if I'm attending a conference, uh, usually I'm doing some speeches at conference when, when I'm attending, but I always try to go to sessions I don't know anything about because going to something you already know well is not so rewarding as going to something you should have an insight to and learn something just to see how stuff works. It's like when you were a kid and you got a present and you took every part uh, from it to see how it works, it's just finding the screwdriver and see if you can dissimulate it and then you could put it right back, right? So, so just exploring new stuff all the time is better than, uh, you should always go to track uh, and know what you are doing when you are doing your main job, but knowing side stuff is also uh, really fun and uh, important. Well, that's why I also love the take the occasional class. I mean, stretch yourself, which is another, yeah. great, I mean, it's always being learning. I think that's something, I think humans need to always be learning something in general. I think yeah. it helps us to stay you know, grounded and well-rounded in the things that we're doing. Like I just, mm. I just finished a, a week long class and I, it was around Power Platform, and there are pieces of what I learned which I'll never use again unless I take another class. But I wanted just to be able to speak to it, to be aware of the various components. Yeah. Now I have better understand of how they come together, and I, I yeah, we can recommend it for other people, right? Right, so, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's why I lo actually love the Microsoft Learn platform because it's so easy to go in, especially when they have challenges where you can attend a a challenge, cloud challenge, and uh, be a part of a rewarding system and stuff like that. But but I like to do uh, the Microsoft Learn courses. I don't do the certification anymore because I have done enough of them and I know I don't need need them in my, uh, my work anymore. Mm -hmm. But I still like to take the different courses, uh, yeah. like the Azure Developer course. I'm not a developer, but I read it to see how would a, will, would a developer affect my daily work uh, what kind of system should i know about that they might be using yeah that uh, that's great advice in, in general anything else that you give like, i'm sure as an mvp for 15 years you've had plenty of people come up to you and say what is this process to become an mvp what kind of guidance do you give a a prospective mvp I, I think it's uh, uh, the uh, the main part is the same that I will give to everybody that uh, will have a good career. It's to be visible, and you can be visible by 
having a Twitter account, Twittering stuff, a blog. And, and people think that if you blog, you need to write 14 pages of something. But basically, the most read blogs are just half a pager because yeah. they are directly to the point. So, so I, I think that um, you should try to be visible on the, on the online world. Uh, on the different medias, uh, you should attend community classes, uh, community uh, uh, groups, uh, if you have some in your neighborhood, and try to do speeches or at least attend and talk to them. So, so you are visible and people know you, but, but you need to have a footprint in the digital world before you can be an MVP today. It was easier when I was an MVP, it was not easier that way, but, but that way you got noticed for what you did from your local Microsoft office, but now you can just have something online and people will start to see that you are often in, uh, in these community pages and answer question or stuff like that. You are, this, uh, you are uh, doing something on Microsoft Docs uh, to build up the, the learning curve and stuff like that. So you need to be visible. And uh, that's the main thing. And uh, people think that MVPs are the best in class that uh, everybody are the uh, the best uh, engineer they can get, but but in basically it's actually about sharing your knowledge with other people. So you don't need to be, be the top guy, but you need to be the guy that actually are willing to learn and share what you are learning with others. Yeah, that that's really the key. That that's the point. I think where when I became an MVP, um, it was kind of a big deal that there was just a handful of us that were business focused MVPs that were non technical and, and and that's and i use that phrase too it's like it's not exactly fair again my entire career has been in it i'm technical in a number of areas but yeah. not, you know not being a developer and not being an engineer by trade um i was therefore a non-technical mvp and there again there was just a handful of us and now you have a good portion of it where i think it, it was a shift even for Microsoft to recognize exactly what you said, that these are individuals who are doing more to share what they're doing. Yeah. You do need to be involved in the technology. That's kind of the point. Um, but it's, you're right. You're surfacing the work that you're doing, highlighting the work of others, recognizing yeah. that being in the conversation. Those are ways that you can become visible. Yeah. Build up a network around you. So that's always a good thing. But uh, and take always the local uh, Azure groups, uh, uh, Office 365 groups, or whatever group you have in your neighborhood. Try to find one that you are involved in that kind of work. And if you get involved there, you have a good starting ground to become an MVP. I will say. Exactly. Yeah. There's there's always a, there's there's not a single user group out there that doesn't look at somebody who is. Uh, willing to volunteer to 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 get involved to they'll they'll not say no to that yeah, they will so welcome. be welcome yeah. the bigger issue is so. that you have a lot of people that just don't be one of them where they come and say hey i want to get involved and then you ghost them you that yeah you never respond never follow up with the user group leadership I, i'm on the the user group board for my local community here in utah and we have plenty of people that get excited, go to an event that we put on or show up at a user group meeting and say, hey, I really want to get involved. I'd love to do more. Or I'd love to be in charge of a, a of a committee within the user group or something. And then we never hmm. see them again. Yeah. And then you get more work because if, if you think they are going to do something and you set it up and they don't follow up, you have to do it yourself. And it's twice as hard as just trying to do somebody else's job. So it's yeah. it's better to say it's too much for me, but I can help in another way. So yeah, so ease in and do what you promise. That's maybe the best and thing. And just so. always showing up, being an attendee and participating, engaging in the conversation. That's yeah. fantastic right there. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, and share, share if there sure. are good events because some of the community events are not that well visited and it should be more people there. So you should just start to share it, uh, write it uh, on LinkedIn or Twitter or whatever you have as uh, social media. And then, then you will start to create your own footprint so people can see it, that you actually have a digital footprint in technology. Exactly. Well, Olaf, really uh, appreciate your time and your insights. And 
hopefully we'll uh we'll get to meet in person one of these days maybe at another mvp summit in person if they start yeah, hopefully. again yeah yeah thanks for inviting me wow. Wow.